back to Free Media. I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. J.D. Vance and Dana Bash feuded on air over allegations of Haitian immigrants eating pets in Springfield, Ohio. The CNN hosts asserted that Republicans were spreading unfounded claims about migrants, and the Republican vice presidential nominee countered that the media was ignoring the concerns of his constituents. The American media totally ignored this stuff until Donald Trump and I started talking about cat memes. If I have to, but it if wasn't I just have to meme, create sir. stories so that the American media actually pays attention to the suffering of the American people, then that's what I'm going to do, Dana. Because you just said that you're creating a story. We ought to be talking about public policy. Sir, you just said that you're creating the story. What's that, Dana? You just said that this is a story that you've yes. created. So, so the, the eating dogs we and cats are thing is we, not We are accurate. creating, we are, Dana, it comes from firsthand accounts from my constituents. I say that we're creating a story, meaning we're creating the American media focusing on it. Yeah, what he, he meant by creating the story, or he was trying to say was that he's was giving publicity to the firestorm around what's going on there. He was not like conceding on air that he was making it up or something like that. Um, now, obviously the the accusations have, so the, the memes were about cats and dogs and pets, et cetera. Um, I have not been able to find actual evidence of people's pets being abducted by migrants or anyone else. Um, what the constituent, what the people in the city had made some complaints about were um, ducks and geese being potentially killed in the public um, spaces, which is a little bit different. So I've criticized, obviously, Trump for bringing that up in the debate when I think even conservatives who are trying to argue that there is something going wrong in the community have conceded that, well, it's not actually people's pets being abducted. It's this other problem, which, okay, fine, everybody should follow whatever the rules are for the public community space and the authorities should take that seriously, but um, it's been ducks and geese rather than cats and dogs. Yeah, I think it's wise, of course, always to make sure you're verifying stories before you're sharing them publicly. Since this cat meme has come <laughs> out across social media, um, Chris Rufo offered $5,000 to someone who could verify that this was happening. He claims to have gotten the evidence. There's a video that shows something being barbecued on a grill they claim it's a cat. There's cats walking around the grill. And he had talked to veterinarians and surgical experts and anatomical experts who claim that it is a cat on the grill. It's obviously hard to see in the video what exactly it actually is. But the ducks and geese story has been corroborated by multiple firsthand witnesses. There's a police report, that 911 phone call that accompanied the police report of someone who witnessed Haitian migrants leaving the local park with multiple geese in their hands. Um, there's been TikToks people have been making claiming that there was a heavy stray cat population in Springfield, Ohio, that has since apparently been decimated. Is that a bad thing, though? I mean, I, I, don't, I look. I mean, this, we're going to argue about this. I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't exactly grow up hunting ducks and geese, but I know lots of people did. Not Haitians, but white people hunting um, waterfowl. Eat, I've eaten duck. Yeah. Um, I don't. Again, they have, should have, be following whatever the community guidelines are doing so, but I'm not going to get super exercised about people hunting wildlife. Obviously, abducting people's pets would be a totally different thing. But even with, like, the Rufo video, which I saw, you know, and he said, you know, all right, he offered money for people to find evidence of what. So that video apparently comes from a different town and does not, it's not um, Haitians. It's an Af it's Africans, but not, not Haitians. Um, and... I, I've looked, it might be cats. I, I, I'm not going to argue that it's not cats. It might very well be cats. Um, but it's not, it's not being alleged that it's someone else's cat, right? That it's a pet. So still not a pet, not the same town, and not Haitians. So look, are, you know, are, other pe are your neighbors sometimes eating or doing things you don't approve of? Sure. Um, I, and I'm not going to say that, like, um, you know, that there's nothing to any of this because... I guess I'd be upset if like dead animal carcasses were always being dragged across the sidewalk in the front of my house. But um, I don't know, seems a little overblown. To me, it's a story of a lack of cultural assimilation. Um, mm. The idea that it would be considered no big deal for someone to walk into the local park where your kids are playing and behead a goose and take it home against all of the proper federal and state law, that you would have a problem with that. I think most people would. Um, I'm a 
a duck and goose hunter, and I can tell you there are federal duck stamps. Yeah, tell us about it. You were telling me yeah. about some of the protocols. There's, go, go there's a federal duck stamp that you have to purchase before mm -hmm. you hunt waterfowl. There's usually state duck stamps as well. There's hunting seasons. Um, a lot of the reports came in August, which is well outside of waterfowl season. It's usually mm -hmm. a small period of time in the fall and then in the early uh, spring or late winter, and uh, also December, January as well, depending on where you are. But the geese that we're talking about here are Canada geese, which are actually a federally protected species because they Eradicate used to be in, them all. They used to be endangered. They shit everywhere. <laughs> they do. I want them all gone. They do do that. Um, but they are protected under federal waterfowl mm. regulations mm. from a law dating back in the mid 1900s, um, and the. Uh, scenarios under which you can hunt them is very, very restricted. You also have to use a certain type of weapon and a certain type of ammunition to be sure that you're killing them humanely. Um, and obviously none of that's being followed here. But I mean, what J.D. Vance obviously is saying in this interview is you've dumped somewhere between 10 and 20,000 Haitian migrants under a temporary protected status into a small Ohio town. There's been a lack of cultural assimilation. There's been a, a skyrocketing rates of communicable diseases, of car accidents. Have there been? There have been, yeah. You can look at the HIV rates in Springfield, Ohio. They've actually gone up quite substantially. And there have also been uh, overwhelmed schools and community services and healthcare services because this town is not prepared with the infrastructure to take in this massive influx of people. I mean, and the residents are rightfully upset about that, and no one listened to them for the past three or four years until this happened. Some residents are clearly upset. I mean, the Republican governor, Mike DeWine, said that, you, know, you said, you dumped them here. I mean, he says they were invited to help do work and economically revitalize a town that um, needs people, again, to to do work and participate in its economic situation. There are always going to be some problems with assimilation, I guess, but you know, our I don't know, my my ancestors were Italians. They didn't they ate different food than other people for a while and was that is that to be like utterly like is that the end of the world if different cultures have different costumes for some period of time? Well, there were legitimate problems with the Italian and Irish immigration in that time period in You're going to take my people out of the country too. I'm just I mean, saying just Amber left. There there were just Amber and her ducks. That's fine. I'd be happy with that, but I mean, there were problems with mobs and corruption and crime obviously when those communities came and they assimilated over time. It didn't happen immediately, but well, these will too. It, it, but people asked for them to do that, and there was legitimate concern then about a large group of a different ethnic group with different cultural standards coming into the United States and bringing with them practices that were considered incompatible with what American society, what they wanted American society to look like, and. Ultimately, those people addressed those concerns and assimilated. I don't think it's unreasonable to ask that Haitians who move here follow the same protocol I mean, and follow the same rules. I'm gonna, I, I want to ask people to, on their own property, they can do whatever they want. I don't care what you're grilling and your back porch. It's just no business of mine. It just doesn't matter to me. Now, you can't be stealing from other people. You can't be taking other people's pets. But that's why this whole thing starts to fall apart a little bit, because that was the accusation that was made, and that would be... Yes, that would be a violation of other people's property. That's not, that wouldn't be okay, but it was just like random photos. Even the one, the two that went viral, one was the cat, which again was not a Haitian migrant or the same town. And then the other was that guy carrying a bird, which the latest I heard about that was that, it, again, it was not Haitian, not that town, and was not, had not been hunted, was, was, had been hit by a car and was being cleared out of the street. So I feel like there was a lot of um, just seizing on images of the internet that, are, are a distraction, I'm sure, from some real issues that people are suffering in their communities, and it's not always easy to have um, to to have towns have to deal with mass migration of different kinds of people. I understand there will be pluses and minuses to it, but um, you know it's important to be careful with the facts. Yeah, no, I agree. There's been a conflation of some stories with legitimate resident concerns, but I'm also cautious about dismissing outright what residents are saying they've witnessed firsthand. And I think there's been a lot of lazy journalism from the mainstream media, from people like Dana Bash, who did not challenge Kamala Harris nearly as much as she's challenged J.D. Vance well, that in his multiple with. interviews on the network. I mean, every time he's gone on, she's just been question after question about the same thing over and over again. 
whereas her sit down with Kamala and Tim Walls was basically a series of, of effectively right. softballs. Um, but th what the mainstream media has basically done is say, oh, well, we called the city manager and they said it's not happening. And it's yeah, actually, that, and it's taken independent and conservative journalists going to Springfield, Ohio, pulling police records and actually trying to investigate these claims for the people of Springfield to feel like they're being heard at all. And it shouldn't take that. Yeah, I, I did, uh, when, when people sa tried to rebut it with, oh, but the police say there's nothing wrong. I'm like, well, we don't, in a lot of contexts, we don't, even we, like we libertarian people, we don't instinctively trust what the police had to say about it. Maybe there were complaints and they didn't want to do anything about it. Right. It's a little different than saying um, it's not real. All right, I think we had a successful discussion of the contentious pet abduction animal issue. So let's, uh, let's leave it there. More free media right after this.